Good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Odom, and I'm the Assistant Executive Director for Corporate Partnerships with the ABCA. Since 1945, the ABCA has been bringing great coaching minds together to educate, mentor, guide, and support the greatest game in the world. We're excited that you have joined us tonight. We have a great webinar in store brought to you by our partners at V1 Sports. A few things of note, a copy of tonight's webinar will be uploaded to the ABCA video library tomorrow via abca.org. We also want this webinar to be interactive. Feel free to post comments or questions in the chat box and our panel uh, will get to those at some point throughout the webinar. Also, be sure to stay on till the end. We've got a great uh, surprise here where uh, we will announce the winner of the iPad and a one-year subscription to V1 Pro, which is an $1,800, over an $1,800 value, courtesy of our friends and partners at V1 Sports. At this time, I'd like to introduce our host tonight, Phil Stoddard, V1 Sports Director of Sports Science and Biomechanics Expert and ABCA member Chad Miller, founder of Louisville Slugger Hitting Science Center. Phil and Chad, thank you to you and V1 Sports for putting this together. Take it away. Thanks so much, Mike. And thank you, ABCA, for having us. Thank you, Chad, for having us out here at the Louisville Slugger Hitting Science Center. Um, it's been an amazing day for us out here spending time with you guys. And tonight, we are going to talk about how to coach with ground force and video technology. And like Mike said, my name is Philip Stotter. I'm a CEP and I'm the director of sports science uh, for B1 Sports. And we have Chad here, who is the, you can tell him, Chad, go ahead. My name is Chad Miller. I'm the co-founder of the Louisville Slugger Hitting Science Center. Uh, we're extremely excited to be part of this presentation this evening. We're located here in Louisville, Kentucky with our physical facility. We also do camps and clinics for our mobile lab unit throughout the United States. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk about just for those that are tuning in for the first time that said, hey, I don't know who V1 Sports is. Well, we're we we're founded in 1995. We're a 25 year old company and we were one of the first companies to ever deliver a voice over lesson over the Internet. Um, if you play golf, you probably know us really well because we've been doing this in golf for a long time. But during that time, we also had softball coaches, baseball coaches you name a sport, they were using our technology. And we're trusted by 10,000 plus coaches. We have over 4 million uh, athletes improved through video and virtual lessons to date. And we have become an industry leader in video analysis and ground force and pressure analysis. And so if you're wondering, well, what do you do? Um, our products, what we like to call it is performance technology. And so what it is, is there's a performance technology and there's a results technology. And so what we do is we analyze what happens before that result. And so we do it by having a PC version, which we hook up to basically a computer and we have um, high speed cameras that work with that. We work with mobile uh, on an iPad. And so you can have a baseball lab anywhere. And we also have ground force mats, which are actually under Chad right now. And we're gonna demonstrate those in a little bit. So let's first talk about our software on our desktop. And this is really the bells and whistles of our system. And so this can be integrated with um, whatever you know, environment you want. It can even be portable, but typically it's within say, like we're set up today in a cage here. And what it comes with is basically 30 plus uh, annotation tools, things that you can add to your coaching, uh, whether you're doing it for sending lessons, doing it for analyzing the player, um, and this also works with our ground pressure technology as well. Um, we also have a mobile version and our mobile software can go anywhere. You can set up anywhere. You can set up on the field. You can set up outside. You can set up down the street. <laughs> You've got a place you want to coach baseball. We can make it happen for you and we can collect that information. Uh, and so we're completely portable with our technology. Uh, pretty much take it anywhere capture Im images, capture ground force technology, uh, and really it's a perfect toolkit for any coach. So <clears throat> let's talk about our hardware. So 
ground pressure technology, we have pressure mats, okay? And those pressure mats come in different sizes and really pressure mats can come in any size. So Chad, if you want me to set up this whole place in pressure, I can do it. Please do. <laughs> so with that, we're able to gauge information that comes into our system, which we're about to talk about and why that's important for coaching. Because for a lot of you that are probably tuning in tonight, you probably don't know the importance or maybe you're teetering on what's the importance of capturing this type of information. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what that looks like. What does that experience look like? And I was watching this chat today out in, in your center. We were going through hitting, we were watching pitchers using this. And so this tool and here we're demonstrating the mobile version, but tell me a little bit more what your experience so far has been with this. You know, the V1 pressure mat is so amazing because we're able to actually use it in all facets of the game, whether it be throwing, hitting, pitching, running, you know, we've had some earth shattering you know, developments actually with a lot of our players that have been really neat from the perspective of that. What's neat is this adds to coaching to a field, not just so the sensing it and being able to tell a player about what you're doing, but to actually have them feel it. So if we say, hey, we need you to absolutely take and line up big toe to big toe, or we need you to be able to transfer your weight 60, 40. Well, now we can actually have them not only see it, they can actually feel it on the screen. Right, right. No, exactly. And it becomes such an important ad. Because let's remember something when we're dealing with video, we can see that, but what we can't see is force. And it gives that and it delivers that information. So let's get into why. <laughs> why do I want to coach with ground force? Why is ground force important? And if you've ever heard me present on this, I always have the same equation I talk about. There's three things at play and why it's important. There's the world. So what we're standing on right now. There's us, which is a very small mass, and then there's gravity. This incredible force working against us or working with us in our movement. And so if you understand the biomechanics of the way the body works, we have to understand that equation, all right? Because movement or without gravity and without that ground is not movement that we know, okay? So it's really important to, how do we measure that? How do we understand that? How do we understand why a player moves the way they do? And how can I see that, right? Because force is invisible to us. And so what ground force and what ground pressure does is allows us to see that force. And that force is what your player's feeling. So if I wanted to expand on that a little bit, because I get asked that question all the time. Phil, what's the difference between a force plate and a pressure mat? So there's not really a difference in what it's actually capturing. Force is force, all right? And so how does it measure it though? All right, so if I have a force plate or if I have a pressure mat and why at V1 do we use pressure? Let's, I like to keep things simple. And so as you can see, there's a little analogy. So there's a race car driving down the, uh, down the street and I take a gun and let's call that gun my force plate because a force plate measures force in a direction, it's called a vector. And so I can get the speed of that car. With a pressure map, what's really great is I can look under the hood. It allows me to see why it went fast. It allows me to see you know, what its capabilities are, where it's going, all those key details. And a lot of times you've heard me say in the past, pressure gives me segmented information, granular information. What does that mean? It means it gives you an insight into the workings of whether it's your player, whatever you're trying to coach and all those good things. So what does it look like? What does the information look like, right? And we've been talking about this today. The wonderful thing with ground pressure and why every baseball coach, softball coach, any coach, anybody <laughs> that is working with athletes, with anyone should be focused on this. It allows us to know the where, the how fast and the how much. And when I say that, where, control, sequencing, those types of things, timing, okay? How fast, timing, how much power, how much force is applied. And so you see those three graphs, and Chad, we talked about this earlier, having that representation of information mm -hmm. instead of a bunch of numbers, if I give you a list of a bunch of numbers and I say, okay, now go coach that player with it. 
it doesn't happen. <laughs> but if I give you a graphical impression of that information that allows you then to see the forces, the speeds, all those types of things looking under that hood, it allows you to coach a little bit better. You want to expand on how you've used these graphs Absolutely. to work with your players? Absolutely. And you know, if you look in the far left, you have the heat map. And for us, we were big into teaching about landing on basically different parts of the foot. Because if you land on, let's explain, if we have a, a player, and one of the things that we really look at, and we'll touch upon this later, is how we, how we pre-screen players. How do we look at the anatomical landmarks that each individual player has, and how does that pathology of that player actually equate to what their technique should be. If we talk about this, and what's so neat about the ground pressure is that everybody's ground pressure is like their fingerprint. Right. It can be completely different. But what is really neat is the trends are the same, the patterns are the same, and to be able to just hand a, a, a sheet of paper or Excel spreadsheet over to a player, it's like <laughs> talking to them in Martian. They're not gonna get it, they're not gonna understand it. However, by standing on the mat, understanding the sine waves, being able to talk to them and say, listen, when you do this, this happens. For every action, it has an equal and opposite reaction. And so sometimes you talk to players about that, they have no idea what you're talking about. But what's really neat about this is that I can say, hey, I need you to load your big toe. I need you to load your heel. I need you to step on the outside. I need you to pull through your pinky toe for running. We're able to actually see that. So I spent 14 months researching technologies. I looked at the AMT force plates. I looked at every force plate in the marketplace. I looked at the perfect mound. But what I came up with, what was so neat about the V1 mat, is I was able to individually identify each individual part of the foot and each individual part of the weight transfer that allowed me to actually get in my players' heads. And without being able to have that information and then marry that up with the sine waves and the kinetic energy and the kinematic sequencing that appears on those waves, now all of a sudden I can go from screen to screen to screen. I can look at acceleration versus deceleration. If I were to have to have that conversation two years ago, it would not have happened. Now, all of a sudden, things that took us three to four weeks to get through in a player's head, we now get through their heads in a minute, two minutes, just because they're now able to feel the information and not only feel it, but also see it on the map. Yeah, no, great. And that's a perfect understanding coming from a coach's perspective, too. And just to give you a really quick uh, rundown of what you're seeing there, you're seeing a pressure percentage graph, and that's basically a heat map impression, a reflection of your force and you can see where it's red it's it's a greater force where it's green and blue it's a little bit less you see that yellow line that goes across on that first graph that's your movement pattern so whether i'm swinging a baseball whether i'm doing a squat whether i'm walking down the street that's what you're talking about is that signature that that, that thumbprint that unique pattern that an individual has and there's you know close to ideal ways to do things to see great results Second graph, you see there is velocity. How fast am I moving? How fast am I recognizing? How fast am I accelerating, decelerating? We need to know where it happened. We need to know how fast it happened. And then we need to know how much power took place during it, right? So one of the cool things, if you look on the far left screen, what's neat about that is actually those little yellow lines. That's your signature. And so that's what I, whenever I'm talking to players, it's actually what I refer to as their momentum. And so, especially in catching mechanics, throwing mechanics, if you're fielding a ground ball, what we've all, what we've seen in a really neat anecdotal kind of like side study that we've seen is that somebody that loses their balance, somebody that loses their momentum, their butt is going, if they're a catcher, their butt is going to third base. We can actually see that with that yellow trace line, which is really neat. And so we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that white dot represents your center rotational mass. And what's neat is that your weight, that's your chin over your belly button that I've been talking, you know, ever right. since I've been four years old in a batting cage. <laughs> and so now all of a sudden I can relate that to a map and I can talk to that player and say, listen, see that yellow line? That's your direction. That's your balance. That's what's happening. I had a really cool situation with a catcher from University of Louisville who just swore up and down that a, a jump up and pop and spin type footwork was the best footwork ever. It was the fastest way. But all of a sudden his velocities were 74, 75. Meanwhile, the guys that are playing over top of them are 81, 82. Well, all we did was we, I'm like, listen, just try this footwork out for me. Just put, get on the map. Let's watch your footwork. Let's watch where your feet are landing. But most importantly, let's watch where that yellow trace line goes. Right. With the pop footwork, he actually lost pressure, which means he lost his power. He lost his legs, which means that he was throwing all arm. Now all of a sudden it clicks in his head. I'm like, okay, I need you to keep in contact with the ground. I need you to make sure that that yellow trace line is facing straight and you got your momentum carrying towards your target. 
Now all of a sudden we change his footwork. He throws 82 miles an hour within two throws. That just doesn't happen with any other technology. Right, no, and that's the big thing. We're able to capture objective information, quantify that information. We're able to then supply that to the coach. You can then share that with the player. A lot of times I like to hide technology because you don't want to get technology in the way. But this allows us, and it's hidden today. I mean, you wouldn't even see it here, but it's happening right now. I mean, you're standing on a pressure mat. So we're able to calculate that information. So it really helps. And that's what I'm hearing. It helps deliver that coaching, how to apply it. Technology is great. Mm -hmm. But if you can't be actionable with technology, it collects dust. It's garbage, right? garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, no, no, for sure. So... We hear this all the time, we're asked this question, well, what can I use ground pressure for? What can I use the V1 system for? And you name it, <laughs> find me a human movement and we'll measure it, all right? So physical screens, functional training, drills, hitting, pitching, catching, you name it. And this is something I wanna hit on really quick, Chad, with you, but I wanna answer something too for everybody out there. We can put any age person on this, okay? At the age of two, you're learning how to walk, okay? All right, you're watching your parents doing that. There's no kind of like structure on when technology, and you know, most kids today are born with an iPhone in their hand anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So technology is really, it's ageless, okay? It doesn't really matter. Now, you would apply it a little bit different, right? Because you're gonna have to make it a video game for those young kids, right? And you're gonna have to make it more descriptive and instructional as you get into high school and college and those things. But any age, it can be used for any sport like we talked about, but let's talk just really quick. I want you to hit on, because I know here at Louisville uh, Slugger, you guys are doing screens before you're actually doing the actual uh, sport specific movements. He's Absolutely, hit on that. and, and like, like we talked about earlier, you know, we have to identify each individual athlete. You know, you know, we've had several situations for, for guys that aren't too familiar with pathology where they have valgus ankles, where they're actually their ankles will kick out. And so then all of a sudden we've got to correct those movement pattern or we've got to correct that physiology before we can even get into the movement pattern. So by identifying what types of anatomy and what types of physiology these athletes have, now all of a sudden we can identify their strengths and their weaknesses a lot more efficiently. And so before, you know, we're looking at screens where we might see somebody that rolls over their ankle and we're like, okay, you're rolling over your ankle on your front side. Well, we know that we're going to be losing. We might have the greatest load in the world. Then all of a sudden we land on our front foot, our, our front side load rolls over. Now all of a sudden we, we, just, uh, we just identified that may, may not have a lateral ankle instability issue. So if that's the situation, by watching that pressure mat and seeing that instability, we can immediately take the athlete in the weight room or we can take them to the physical therapy clinic that's in our building and get them corrected immediately. And that's the most important thing is, is that we've had several athletes, especially in, in the pitching realm, where they'll go up and it'll be in their balance point. And we're like, oh, you guys, you look great on flat ground. They're throwing 84 to 86 on flat ground. They get up on the mound and all of a sudden they're throwing 78 to 84. And we're like, what just happened? Well, what we turned out is that that athlete has a lateral ankle. Uh, they have a valgus ankle and all of a sudden they can't, you know, all the earth, the moon, the sun, and the stars have to go align in order for them to get their, their bones properly lined up and their anatomy properly line, lined up. And all of a sudden now, because they can't get lined up, they're underneath their breaking ball. They can't get on top of their fastball. They're losing velo because they're not physiologically aligned. Right. And so through technologies like the pressure mat, it makes it very easy for coaches to identify those patterns. Right. No, oh, for sure. And it's something that's been used on the SNC side. It's something that's been used, obviously, in the medical and clinical side for, for many, many years. And you've got to analyze the player to go into, or you can look at the performance metric and work back into the assessment and screen them that way. Mm -hmm. So it works in both directions. And so it becomes a universal lab for you. Mm -hmm. And it works for all aspects aspects of your coaching toolkit, Absolutely. which is really great. No, excellent. So let's, what can ground analysis answer? I think we've been doing that for a while now. And something that I did promise for this webinar tonight is we're going to talk about some key performance indicators before we get into that. So what to look for, right? Mm -hmm. Coaches have been asking me at the ABCA conference, I had coaches walking up to us constantly saying, okay, what's the first thing I should see? And we're going to talk about that in a second. Before I get there though, what you get from gravity pushing down on your body, you pushing back against the ground and getting my body to move right then. All right. If I had a pressure mat underneath me, we would have been able to measure what it took me to just move. Like I just did. We call it energy flow, 
All right, we call it kinetic linking. Okay, now I'm getting a little technical tonight. But this is really important, all right, when we get into understanding the movement patterns of a athlete, of a person, not just when they're swinging a bat, not just when they're catching, like you just said. It's really important to understand that sequence and of what's going on. And can I get the energy to the ball, to the bat, to the ball, or what those types of things? And so really understanding what the capabilities and why it's so important to make sure that if you're showing up for lunch, that you actually are showing up with your lunchbox, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the first step in it. And then to see that sequencing all the way out through your movement. And so if we're talking about KPIs and things like that, it, um, we want to definitely think about how your body's moving. And before we get into that, why don't we stop for a second because I know questions are rolling in. <laughs> and why don't we answer a couple of things before we move into that cool KPI stuff? No, no, that's a, that's a great question. So as far as using pressure with other systems, what you have to understand is ground pressure mats is the technology that's pulling the information in, the data. And if I showed you what that data looked like, you wanna really get confused? It's X's and O's and numbers and all kinds of things like that. What we did at V1 is we took that data, we made it simple, we, we, we chose what we wanted to measure. And I say this a lot, this term, measure what matters. And so whenever you're thinking about any of this type of technology, what does it mean to you as a coach? What do you need to see, mm -hmm. right? Do I need just a vertical amount of force that's going to tell me how if this kid's going to be able to hit well or not? Probably not, no. you know? <laughs> no. Do I need certain information? And so at V1, remember, you're buying the software, the software, the interface, the thing that you're looking at. That's just sending a little bit of information in. It's how we process that information. So yes, you can use ground pressure with different systems, but it's really important that the system you're using is something that actually you can take action with. And I'll, I'll help it. I'll kind of follow up with that. I can tell you from doing our mobile camps and clinics, you know, we're, we're, we're very fortunate, and very blessed that we're able to last year, I think we we're in front of over 10,000 kids in our mobile lab series. And with that, you know, utilizing the V1 mobile app and also in conjunction with pressure really allows with the coaching tools to be able to draw lines, put X's and O's, put circles, identify and really slow down and, and you go frame by frame off of v one software is it's it's really works in sync with the pressure mat if we didn't have that technology there's several instances of, and examples i can bring up just off the top of my head that by partnering with the v1 the coaching app uh and also being able to upload player data into their lockers really helps us with the pressure mat so i would strongly suggest and, and to be honest with you the app isn't that expensive uh, utilize the V1 app and the software in conjunction with the mat. And then maybe expand on that a little bit more too. I mean, if, if we're talking some results technologies that this could work with, Pocket Radar, mm -hmm. Grab Soto, these types of result technologies that you can get that number, right? That exit velocity, pitch velocity, and then let's reverse engineer. Let's work back and find out why it happened. Let's look under the car's hood, yep. right? And yep. see what created that speed. And that's what is really important too. Uh, so if it's a question that goes deeper, where can it work with other types of technology? Of course it can. Absolutely. You know, of course it can, and you should. It's a great partner technology. Yep, no, for sure. We have any other questions real quick? Okay, yep, no, for sure. So the question is, how heavy is the, is the pressure mat and is it portable? It is 100% portable. Uh, we can, you can take it pretty much anywhere. You can take it on the road. <laughs> it's so the ultimate road, road show, right? To be honest with you, that's why we selected the technology because we'll do over 200 mobile camp dates this year. And the whole entire reason why I selected the V1 mat over an AMT force plate was the portability. 100% hands down, because we can move it, we can actually, you know, Dave Hanson, who's the Cincinnati Reds hitting coordinator, he, he takes, he literally carries it in his carry-on. It's right. probably one right. of the most mobile, useful tools I've ever came along. You, you mentioned pocket radar. Pocket radar and a V1 force mat are the two most utilized tools in our bag in our mobile app. Right, right. How heavy it is, it, it depends on the size. You know, if you're talking about the three foot, the five foot or what size you have, it's, you know, it, it's less than, you know, seven pounds. 
total weight depends on the cover. If you put turf on it, those types of things, but it's extremely lightweight. I travel around the country with one of these things in my suitcase mm -hmm. <laughs> in my backpack, and you can pretty much go anywhere with it. Oh, you want to show it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can show it real quick. So, so I don't know if people can see that. So there is the pressure mat. Awesome. And so super lightweight, super easy fabric. And so it's not like something that you have to calibrate. It's not something that is super heavy. You can plug and play. That's the beautiful thing about pressure. It doesn't matter the surface, you can plug and play. Uh, you don't have to worry about is the, is the surface completely flat because of the way it's gauging that information. Any last question? Maybe one more question. Now we're good. All right. So what everybody's been waiting for. So what do I do when I unpack my mat when I first get it, right? And how do I use it? And where do I go with it? And what do I do? And we know this term in baseball. We know this term in a lot of sports, key performance indicators. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to run through six key performance indicators that we do with the V1 system. Um, and so what you should look for and why you should look for it, what age ranges that people would fall into if you were to get a certain data point and then how to coach with it. So I'll introduce each one and then you can go into, you know, pro tips, drills and things like that. So let's start with the first one. And it's a term called release factor. Release factor is an important thing and something that we can measure. It's a mind body connection. All right. And so it's the time between peak of acceleration. So we're capturing the information of your body accelerating to decelerating. So that peak moment of velocity, all right? Not the bat, your body that controls the bat. So that information and how you're telling how to use that information, how you know when that go moment is, okay? So if you've got a very fast release factor, so we're talking milliseconds, and it's a really low number, okay? You can allow a pitch to get closer, to come out of that tunnel, to start to move, to start to see that location, because you know you have the reaction time to adapt, react, and make action towards it. And it's really super important. It's something really important to be able to gauge to understand a player. And it doesn't just stay with hitting, it can be for catching, for transfer, it can be with pitching, to ball release. It can be used in different ways. We're really focused on hitting tonight. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit more on how you would use this and how you've been using this type of metric. And, and to be honest with you, you know, one of the things we do here at the Louisville Slugger Hitting Science Center is actually scientific bat fitting. And release factors is a big thing for us because we actually factor that into our taper ratio for our bats that we fit for each individual player. So if you've got a slower release factor, well, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to thin out your, your taper, which if we thin out your taper, that means your bat is more brittle and more fragile. If you've got a faster release factor, we can go a little thicker, which means we can have a little bit bigger barrel, especially for our pro guys. So that's a huge, huge deal for us. That correlates directly with reaction time. It correlates with brain waves. Those are all things that by having that release factor KPI built into it, now we can take a really deep dive, not only into performance, but we can also take a really deep dive into equipment fitting, which before now all of a sudden you're talking a whole nother level of optimization in player performance. Yeah, no, no, great. No, exactly. And so, you know, to learn more about release factor, you know, contact us at V1. We can demonstrate that we can show that, but we're going to move on to that next KPI uh, because we're limited on time tonight. So a, a, a really important thing, and we saw that in the release factor, we saw two measurements in, in release factor. We saw launch to contact, right? And so we basically took that time, but my peak velocity, mm -hmm. all right, peak velocity is a really important thing. All right. There's two things that create power. All right, mass, yep. all right, and if I'm not the size of Aaron Judge, okay, and I'm more like an uh, El Tuve, right, <laughs> I need to be able to be quick, all right, to create power, all right, and so I've got to know how fast can I move, how fast can I get my body, my fast switch happening, all right, and that's something that we can gauge with ground pressure, and so it's peak uh, COP velo is what we call it. And as you can see on the screen there, it's different at different levels, which is obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're experiencing, we're training, we're working on how to make our body have fast twitch response. And this is an, a huge, important metric for, and when it's happening, timing, sequencing of it. You want to go into a little bit more on how you have worked with peak uh, COP velo? Absolutely. Because what's neat about peak COP velo is this. 
is that it's actually a key P, a KPI for us from a standpoint that we can actually take that measurement. Now all of a sudden we have baseline and we have normative data points that we can say, are you above average or below average? And based upon that, now all of a sudden we can build out performance plans and performance metrics. Okay, if we've got hip, tight hips, okay, well, we know that you probably are gonna be a little bit slower in your peak down the line. So uh, with guys that have faster hips and more mobile hips, now all of a sudden you're gonna see their, their spike a little bit earlier in the curve. So what's neat about that, now all of a sudden I can balance those points out. And if I got somebody who's too quick to release, well, guess what? They're gonna be out in front. If I got somebody too, who's too slow to release, well, we know they're susceptible to inside pitches. So therefore we can sit down and have very, very, very detailed oriented uh, conversations about pitch selection and also about where their strengths and weaknesses are in the zone, which is something that we would not be able to do. Right, no, that's great. Now that's fantastic. So that's peak COP below, and that's a velocity of your body moving of the forces that apply to make your body move and when it should happen. And it typically happens at your acceleration deceleration timing. And that's a super important thing to understand no matter what the movement is, whether it's hitting, pitching, whatever it is, it's a really important metric to understand and to understand your player and how they move, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the next one. So the next one we have is peak dynamic vertical force, okay? And I'm gonna stop for a second and, and explain something because I'm asked this question all the time. So force plate <clears throat> can measure, if it's a multi-dimensional force plate, it can measure basically vertical force, it can measure horizontal force, and it can measure torque force. Okay, so rotational. And I hear it a lot, can your pressure mat do that? Well, pressure mat is a contact force and scalar over area, okay? And here's the thing I always tell everybody. If I don't push my foot down into the ground and create vertical force, okay, I cannot create horizontal force or torque force because it would be like, if I didn't create that vertical force, it'd be like me standing on ice. So my feet on ice, slip, <laughs> rotate, whatever, which way. So with pressure, you've got to be able to capture or force plate or no matter what you're doing to capture ground reaction forces, you have to be able to, you have to be pushing into the ground. Okay, that Z, that vertical force to create the horizontal force because I got to push down and then I got to push sideways to make that happen to create horizontal force. So it is measuring that. We stay with just the vertical force graph because we don't want to make it more complicated. We don't want to drive coaches crazy trying to figure out all these numbers and these different things. And so we know these things are happening and on the graph here, it's showing that. And when is it happening is probably the most important thing, right? And so am I unweighting, you know, getting into the ground? Am I weighting back up? That means pressing in the ground, making my mass heavier. I just talked about, we have acceleration and we have building your mass. So if I can make my mass two times my to total body weight, then I'm gonna be pretty powerful, right? Especially if I got some acceleration but I need to know how powerful can I be? Because maybe you have a player that is not hitting their potential, mm -hmm. right? And if you have screened them already, you'd be able to see what their dynamic force would be, right? So that if they're not distributing that during their sport specific movement, then you would know there's ways to coach them up to get them to that point. Can you expand on a little yeah, bit of that? I mean, I think the easiest way to put this is that how many times have you heard over the last three years hit with your legs? Mm -hmm. And so everybody in every pro organization, you know, we work with nine different teams. And so every pro team that comes in here that we speak with, you know, they're always talking about their hitting coordinators, like, hey, we're teaching with our, our players to really hit with their legs and have more of an attack angle and have more approach with their backside. But you know, what's neat about this thing is actually, we look at those weight transfer points based upon that center rotational mass. And so if I, if I follow that white line on that dot, now then I, I slide over to this graph right here and it tells me my vertical force. Now all of a sudden I can identify and pinpoint not only on this bar graph, but also at the point of the load versus the attack versus the finish. How did that weight transfer go through? Then I can say, okay, all right, I understand you're getting a heck of a load, right? You're coming here, you're now 2.5 times your body weight. You're doing a phenomenal job. But all of a sudden we come here, we come through, now all of a sudden, I'm, I'm loading, I'm driving into my front toe, all of a sudden my, my, foot, my foot rolls. Now all of a sudden, all that kinetic energy that I generated just transferred down into my, into my, into my, into my pinky toe, for lack of a better term. <laughs> and all my force and all my kinetic energy, instead of going through the vehicle of my bat, now just went down to the ground. That's probably the most exciting uh, metric off of the vertical force that I see, because I can identify point by point and segment by segment and then correlate that with the video to show the player exactly where they're losing their power at. 
Right. On the flip side of that, if I identify somebody in a screening process and say, oh my goodness, you got X, Y, and Z going for you, we now know that, hey, from a teaching cue perspective, we identify that you've got, you've got great ankle mobility, you've got great hip mobility, you've got great core strength. Now all of a sudden, we expect you to be in the, that two time or two X factor. Now we can say, here's the benchmark where you should be, here's where you're at. Or, hey, great job. On the flip side, actually teaching to a positive note, you're doing a phenomenal job of loading that backside. Keep it up. If you can just do X, Y, and Z, that's going to translate really, really well. Right. No. And it's, it's this graph here, this information here, this KPI here is giving you the best of both worlds because we're actually seeing if you know anything about ground force technology, force plates, it's impulse. Okay. We're seeing impulse there in that graph. Okay. We're seeing rate of development. We're understanding what that timing of that rate of development is. You know, is this person that took a long time? to get to their peak? Or is this person that can instantly get to their peak and can do it at the right time? So it's giving us a lot of really important information that ties in because alone force in one direction doesn't really tell me a lot, does it? And, yeah. and you know, it's not transfer. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, you're really good at stomping your foot. Yeah, exactly, so. no, exactly. So let's jump to the next KPI. So swing power. So we kind of led up to this, right? And so how do we get swing power? What's the equation? Okay, so that's velocity times force. So if you got those last two KPIs, you've identified, you know, how to see that. Now we can understand power. And power can happen at any point in the swing, okay? And can you sustain power throughout your movement, all right? Because it's not happening at one time, all right? You can calculate it down to that one specific time. Do you want to know your power at impact? Probably. Do you want to know your power at launch? Probably. You want to know your power at load? Probably, right? So this is a really good way to do that. And we do it by understanding what that value for power should be and the way we gauge it in watts. And so if we're talking about swing power, you can expand on that, Chad, maybe on talking about how you've used that with players, what you look for, whether you're just screening them or you're actually, you know, working through a pitching, hitting, catching, what have you. I think it's, what's really interesting is, you know, you, you think about companies like Blast Motion. They talk about on-plane efficiencies, right? And so we talk about on-plane efficiency. It's how long can we stay in that zone of contact? And so what's very interesting about the swing power metric and KPI is that really it measures how long can you maintain that power through the zone of contact. So again, why is that important is if I get full, I'm out in front. Well, if I can maintain that, that power out front, now all of a sudden I can get full. I can, I can be ahead of the pitch. On the flip side, if I get beat and all of a sudden I get jammed, if I can maintain that power, I might be able to muscle a ball out. So what's so cool about this is that now all of a sudden we can actually put a very quantifiable metric and measurement to that. You know, for years and years and years, I'm like, man, he's really good at muscling balls out. Well, that means that now all of a sudden, fast forward 20 years from now, <laughs> we're, we're saying, okay, now we actually have a quantifiable measurement that, that I can put to a player and say, let's actually look at this on a computer screen and have side-by-side -side comparisons. Right. That's probably the most powerful thing in these swing power right. metrics. Right. And I know you told me this is something you're doing, and I know a lot of different, uh, you know, academies, teams, whoever it is, they're doing this is swing banking. Mm -hmm. All right. So they're baselining when things are good. Yep. Right. And so that you can go back to that. You can look at what was working for you. What was your power like? What was your force like? And so that's a big way to use this type of technology is, you know, pitch banking, swing banking, whatever it is. It's a way to correlate and compare and something we're not really showing into the video tonight, but there's ways that we can do side by side as you're seeing in that screen right there is a side by side that we do with our technology. You can do overlays to see that and see that comparison. And we're gonna get into it in a second here, how you can break it down into the each segmented sequence of an actual movement. And before we get to that, we're gonna go into our next KPI. And this is an important KPI. We talked about this before, all right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have heard, especially in the golf world, about traces and identifying traces. But there's a distinct understanding of measurement of trace and what that trace is creating for your movement pattern. And one of those things is the force trace angle, okay? So angular momentum, okay? And if we're seeing an angle momentum in one direction, that means crossing your body's plane in two dimensions, you're probably gonna then see it come back in the other dimension, hopefully, because that then created rotation. And it's something that we wanna see in a rotational sport, right? It's super important. You wanna talk a little bit about that and the force trace angles? Yeah, absolutely. So one thing, you know, trace is very important in this measurement because one thing it's talking about is momentum. The other thing it's actually talking about is timing. A lot of people don't correlate timing and trace together. 
And so what we're looking at here is truly efficiency, efficiencies of movement patterns. Whether you're a pitcher and I'm landing here and my hands are separating, well, guess what? If I'm off balance and my trace angle is off, I know that my timing is going to be off. I know that my hand is going to take me longer to get from this point to this point because simply I'm out of balance. Yeah. And so that's what's so powerful about the trace angle for us here at the Louisville Slugger Hitting Science Center is that we want to be able to see a very efficient movement pattern. Right. Without the trace angle, it probably wouldn't be as effective. Right, right. Um, simply because we're able to follow that path and that movement pattern throughout the entire swing, which is very, very, very powerful. Right. And what we're talking about here, and we're going to get a little more technical, is dynamic control. How well can I control my body in a lateral movement, all right, or any type of movement, right? And where does that movement happen, all right? And we don't want to just know force to force. We want to know what part of the foot generated the kinetic energy that transferred that, mm -hmm. whether the force is coming from my forefoot, my toes, whether it's coming from my heel, and that's what's creating that angled trace and where it's going and what direction it's going. Super, super important. And we can dive into that a lot more. We that's can talk a, about that all a, night, right? That's an hour and a half long. <laughs> yeah, that's a webinar in itself. <laughs> Let's go to the, uh, another trace here. And this is the last trace uh, we're going to talk, or not trace, I'm sorry, KPI we're going to talk about. And this is phase factor. And instead of getting really into this, I just wanted everyone to see the capabilities of what we can do with the V1 system. We were asked earlier in this uh, you know, uh, presentation, can you use pressure with any type of software, any type of system? Well, this is why you should be using V1, because we've got tools in there for you as a coach to be able to break down any type of movement. And this is a place that you can do it with this eight segment phase of the swing, of the pitch, of the you name it. We were playing around with this all day today. And it even goes into detail on each of those detailed information there. And if we go to that next slide here, we're gonna see what that looks like a little bit deeper. And there's 10 metrics there and how we add up those metrics and how we understand that. And we're not gonna go into how we can judge it or we're not gonna say what is perfect. Yep. <laughs> we're just not gonna go there. But what you can do as a coach to start breaking down those segmented pieces into that movement pattern, because at the end of the day, what we're doing here is teaching movement, right? You're just, you're just cleaning up the efficiencies, all you're doing with this. Yep. No, no, most definitely. Most definitely. And I think that, you know, wraps us on the KPA, uh, K KPIs, I'm sorry, but I wanted to stop for a minute and I just want to talk about this amazing facility here in Louisville. And I was act, act, just absolutely floored when I walked in here today and I took a big you know, tour around it and I just couldn't believe what you have here. And I know we captured some, some video earlier on this information or on this, this facility and uh, hope we can get that up and playing here. But let's talk to me about the journey, what happened, what this is all about. Yeah. You, you hit on it a little bit earlier, but I want to get in that and then get into some actual live footage with the technology. Yeah, actually, the, the, the ABCA is actually a big part of this. And my, my college baseball coach, uh, Coach Jeff Messer, was a 2019 ABCA president and uh, actually went up and visited him at the Indianapolis ABCA convention. And it was just, a, to be honest with you, I just wanted to hang out with him and see him. It had been a while. And so as we go through, you're going to see, you know, really representations of Coach Messer and, and, and what he instilled in me as a player. And so as we're walking in, you're actually seeing the room that we're in right now, which is our exercise science lab. Uh, it's our, what we do all of our interaction scans in here. We have a V1 uh, system, obviously, in here. That's our activation room where you guys, you were actually teaching there. Uh, that's our, <laughs> what we call our pitcher armory. That's also our virtual batting cage where we link that up with Win Virtual Reality. As you can see, that's our bank of TVs for our cage and hitting area. We have a cage, we have camera, V1 camera system set up in each individual cage. Uh, the way we had the cage set up here, those were our pro guys hitting this morning. Um, but we have, we have the capabilities to have six different tunnels built inside of that. Uh, but what's neat is, again, the scientific bat fitting realm, the realm that we, bring, we pull into play. You know, the inspiration really was Coach Messer came to me and said, baseball is in a very unique place right now. We have a lot of guys that, uh, that are baseball guys trying to learn science. And we have a lot of science guys learning how to play baseball. My background has been orthopedics and medical device for the last 19 years in conjunction with being a, a former college baseball coach. And uh, unfortunately my dad passed away. So he was a big component of this. And I had another friend of mine who actually, I, I just brought her on as our general manager, Heather Keepers, who came to me and said, you need to get back into baseball because my neuromonitoring company that I own um, we do a lot of, a lot of uh, brain waves and brain function. Had an opportunity to meet uh, you know, Ryan Wheat, who's our director of hitting, Neil Holland, who's our director of pitching, 
and Eric Hammer, who's my business partner in this entity, and we all came together collectively. And, and we found with Louisville Slugger, a, just a phenomenal partner of advancing the ball forward in science. So if you look at Marucci, you look at our competitors out there that are trying to do scientific bat fitting, but they can't touch us. And I'll, I'll talk smack right now, I'll call them out <laughs> right now. But where we're at and where they're at is like a spaceship and a, and a Toyota. Yeah. And so what's cool about where we're heading is that the metrics and it's both the physical metrics, the neurocognitive metrics, and most importantly, the V1 pressure mat and what it's been able to do for us and allow our athletes to just get to a whole nother level. This facility isn't about us. It's about every single player in America that has a Louisville slugger bat that just wants to learn how to swing it more effectively. And through the V1 pressure mat and also the V1 virtual coaching platform, we're now able to reach our goal next year is to reach 2.4 million guys. That's fantastic. And so this year we're on pace to, to, to work with 50,000 kids next year. We're going to be at two, we're going to be at 2.4 million very easily. And so without great partners like you and without great partners like Louisville slugger, this wouldn't have been possible. Right. And we're so happy to be a part of it here at V1 and, uh, with that said, if you're watching right now, which I know you are, <laughs> we've just moved over to now we're living inside the software. All right. And so, Chad, you're standing basically on a pressure mat. You want to jump on the pressure yeah, mat or absolutely. we want to bring somebody out. So, so we we'll can bring, uh, we'll bring a, a Florence Y'all's uh, outfielder here. Ray Zuber, who's one of our coaches it's here. It's not working. And so what you're seeing here is a video demonstration of basically the capabilities of the, tech, of the technology. What you're not seeing is the actual force pressure mat, because right now I think we just pulled one of those plugs out by mistake as we moved <laughs> to this camera. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix that while we're getting set up really quick. But what you're seeing on the screen and all the different crazy things, we talked about it before, you're able to capture information in eight segments. You can capture side by side with the video. You can capture overlays. You can capture different information when it, when it goes through that. We might actually have to go out of the system and come back in because we, we pulled the plug on it, unfortunately. So maybe we'll just do that really quickly uh, before we move on here. Um, but as you're seeing in this PC version, there's there was three graphs up there. And those three graphs give us a very quick, good representation of that information. Our mobile captures that same type of information and we can actually, you know, as you saw in that earlier video, how you can walk around with that tablet capture information, capture angles, those types of things. This one is more set on an actual um, you know, camera and you can have an overhead camera, you can have a camera coming straight on, you can have multiple right. camera angles all at the same time. And I think there we are, we're rock stars, we're back up and running. You wanna jump on that mat really quick and make sure we're actually getting some type of reading there and look at that. That's how quick, plug and play, like I said, and I promise that's what it does. <laughs> so we're getting that information. And what's really great about this, and I'm just gonna jump over here really quick. There we go, there's a live footage of it now. And so we're capturing that. And so Chad, do you want to walk the hitter yep. through basically what you would do first and maybe a screen or something like that? This just shows some people those capabilities and then we'll talk through some KPIs. I'm gonna hang back and just you know process and work with the computer right now while you're doing that but you want to talk about what they're seeing there Absolutely. and then what you should be looking at first again i've unpacked my pressure mat now what do i do so number one we're going to get ray in his initial stance we're going to see what he feels like what type of balance points he has where's the center rotational axis or center rotational max at is he is he in a good balance position is he in a relaxed position now all of a sudden we're going to take him through his loads so he's going to get into his stance He's going to load up and he's going to hold. So he loads and he holds. And as you can see, now all of a sudden we're able to see what, what part of his foot is he, is he loading into? Is he loading into his back toe? Is he loading into his front toe? Does he have his weight distribution evenly, a 60-40 split that we're looking for? We're also looking to see on that, on that vertical force, we're trying to see how much of that weight measurement is going into his back foot versus his trail leg versus his lead leg. So uh, go ahead and load up again. So if I was going to do a screening with him now, as I go through that, now all of a sudden I'm going to look at his attack angle. I'm going to look at his attack position. I'm going to look at how does his back, how does his pelvis roll through and rotate through? What part of his foot is he transitioning on? So now you're going to load up and then basically you know, knob to the ball. Load up, knob. So now all of a sudden, if I look at his attack angle, now I can see his foot strike. I can see what part of his foot is he landing on. Again, is he landing on his toe? Is he landing on his heel? Is he off balance? Is he out of balance? 
Because if he's gonna do it in a dry, now if we're doing a live BP session, now all of a sudden we're starting to speed up that cadence. So again, now you're gonna go load, now you're gonna go, you're gonna go attack, you're gonna stop the bat at the point of contact. Load, attack, okay, perfect. Now all of a sudden we're able to see that spike, we're able to see that acceleration roll through. We're able to see again, how is his balance point? Where is the center, center of rotational mass at? And now how does that translate to weight distribution? So now all of a sudden, we're gonna go take a full entire swing. So again, as we see this, we're able to see, if you notice that white dot, as Ray took that swing, we saw acceleration with the hips, we saw deceleration. We saw as that kinetic energy travels through the entire swing, we saw the center rotational mass, go from back foot to front front foot. Now all of a sudden we saw him on his follow through, we, keep, we saw that he kept his chin over his belly button. Something that's very, very important. He's in a very well-balanced stance. So take another swing for me. On your own cadence. So now what's cool about this is we're able to see trace. So we saw that yellow trace line go through. We saw that, that weight distribution and that weight path go from his back foot to his front foot. And if you look, Ray's very efficient in his movement pattern. His momentum is carrying through the ball. He's doing a great job getting his hands through the zone. As he's breaking down, now all of a sudden we're able to correlate that with the video. And as we swing through, now all of a sudden if he had a blast motion sensor on, how does that data look like from his on-plane efficiency to what he looks like here? Now, as he comes through and he's at that point of contact, now we see that palm up, palm down. As Don Slot talks about with other V1 software, we see Ray's money hole there. As he's coming through and, he, and we're dragging through that screen, we're also able to see that trace line again. We're paying attention to that. And if we're, the most important thing is that how is his weight distribution on that front foot? As he finishes, he's got a great follow through, great extension. He's coming through, he's finishing palm up, palm down. And now all of a sudden we know that he's, he's completely transitioned his weight. But the most important thing that I'm looking for is are his hips parallel to his target? Is he engaging that backside? Is he firing that glute to make sure that he's driving through the ball? Awesome. Great swing, Ray. Let's pull. So as we go through, um, if we look at that, can we go back to acceleration? That's one of the things. There's two points I really want you to look at here in this webinar. Number one, going back to his load. What does his load look like from the standpoint of what is that weight distribution on his, on his trail leg versus his lead leg at the point whenever he's loading his weight up. So get back in your load, in your, in your, in your load phase for me, Ray, and hold. So if we look at that metric on that, back, on that trail leg, what does that weight distribution look like? We talked about two times body weight. A great hitter is able to generate a minimum of two times his body weight on that backside force whenever he's loading up that backside. Then, as, as we were talking about before, as we get that weight transition back, how does that weight transfer through throughout the course of the swing? And then also, as we're going through Ray's swing here, how does, it, does he leak out through his front side? The easiest way to find this, as he's coming through, Ray stays in a really good firm front side, and he's able to transfer that weight. One of the things that Coach Ryan Wheat talks about a lot is the bat is simply a vehicle for kinetic energy. Right. As we talk about that, here's a great example of that spike and that deceleration. So we see that deceleration in a proper sequence. What's going to happen is that all that weight and all that kinetic energy is no longer traveling through our legs. We're learning to learn, learn through our work through our legs. But most importantly, that kinetic energy is traveling out through that barrel. Maybe you could talk about a because people always want to hear this what's a bad versus a good and we went through those kpis just a minute ago yep and those are ranges where you should be and is there bad is there good absolutely <laughs> and so the one number one thing that's really cool about trail versus lead what's what's bad right what's the bad part about that if the weight goes back on the back foot and never carries to the to the lead leg we know that's bad that means that that's a great sign of a rotational hitter However, if you look at Ray, his transition and his weight transfer is pretty even and it's pretty solid coming through that swing. So as we come through, all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. That's a great job of that weight transfer going to that front leg. If Ray had a bad, bad weight transfer, all of a sudden, what's that? I can't see that far. 
What's the uh, weight distribution whenever he's in his load? Yeah, so we're at about 69 into the heel, 31 into the toe. So really generating that force into that posterior side, getting that rotation of that lower half, sending that kinetic energy into the upper body. That's perfect. So great job, Ray. So Ray's going to have a successful season because he's going to be consistent because we've been able to use this benchmark data. And, and as he goes through with the Florence Yalls and tears up the frontier league this year, um, we're going to be or we're going to be able to see that. So, no, for sure. And we're getting pretty limited on time right now. We only have a few minutes left. But thank you so much for that demonstration, for sure. And maybe we'll just stay inside the software for the final wrap up. So if you just yeah, want sure. to walk here and and before we end, I, I just wanted if there was any last questions that came in uh, that we could answer. And feel free to reach out to us. And you can reach out to us, and I, I'm sure there's a, a link that's provided, but support at v1sports.com. There's ways to get in touch with us. There's ways to get information on all of this technology. Know that this technology is being used by all levels, and, and as we just talked about tonight, and these KPIs, these are important identifiers, and that's what you can coach with. It's important to understand what to look for, especially when, like I like to say, when you're unboxing and you're first using this technology, what should I look at first? And just really before we last make that last question, what's the first thing, if you were to get a pressure mat and you were to look and start coaching with it, what would be the first thing that you would do? Athlete screening, hands down. I think that by using this technology, understanding how to utilize it from a screening perspective and a screening metric, it allows you to understand your athlete's strengths and weaknesses. And with that being said, you know that allows you then to take a deeper dive into the athlete and really give them the level of coaching that they deserve. Yeah, no, this is great. And, you know, wrapping it up, I mean, we're kind of out of time here. So uh, last question, we'll just answer really quick. Does the program that we're looking at give video and drills to help you improve? Yeah, yeah. So baseball app does, and, we're, and we do have models, swings in there. And if you go into V1 Baseball and you download the V1 Baseball app, there's models, there's drills, there's demonstration, there's your coaches in mm -hmm. there. Um, there's access to those coaches. And so if you're a parent, if you're a coach, if you're a player and you want to connect with you know, coaches from all over the country, that's what we do best, all right? We can help connect you with the education that you need. You don't have to live in Louisville because you can go on the V1 baseball app, send that information to Chad. Chad can do a lesson for you, explain a swing analysis, send that information back, or one of his coaches can. And that's what makes this so powerful, especially as a coach uh, connecting with your players. They, your players can send that information to you. You can connect as a coach to coach. And that's how we learn. We learn if from each other. And, right? and with that being said, if you are a coach and you're interested in participating in virtual online lessons, with Louisville Slugger Hitting Science Center and V1, please reach out to me. We'd love to have you in our stable of coaches. There's a lot of phenomenal coaches out there with the ABCA. Uh, it's a great way for you to, to, to be able to make side money uh, and be able to make some extra income through coaching on this great pl platform. Yep, and so we're gonna kind of wrap quick there. Thank you so much for everyone in attendance. Thank you for ABCA. Thank you, Chad. Thank you to Louisville Slugger for having us.